Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, people were complaining about the echo in the shop, so today I'm recording this separately in a place that doesn't have an echo and dubbing in the sound over the video. So you can let me know in the comments what you think of this format. Anyway, today I wanted to show you my Norris chuck. Uh, now this is a helical milling apparatus, uh, but let me first explain the name. You know, a lot of drill chucks are mounted on Morris tapers to facilitate uh, inserting them into a drill press, and so we would call these Morris chucks. Now this device uses a small lathe chuck, which because of its size and because of the through hole in the chuck, uh, has to be bolted to a face plate rather than mounted on a taper. So, since this device uses a chuck that is bigger than a Morris chuck, uh, incrementing the first letter of its name by one and calling it a Norris chuck seemed appropriate, uh, plus naming a chuck Norris just seemed fitting somehow. Now let me explain how this works. In order to make helical cuts using my milling machine, I needed a coupling between a linear axis of the machine and a rotary axis. Now originally, my milling machine had a hand wheel on each end of the longitudinal axis, but I find that I really only use the one on the right side. So I took the hand wheel off of the left side of the longitudinal axis and I replaced it with a set of bevel gears. Next I machined this aluminum housing to hold a shaft perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the machine. I mounted this to the machine using a dovetail groove in the front of the milling table that way, I can slide this back and forth a fraction of an inch to engage either pair of gears and turn the shaft in either direction relative to the rotation of the machine axis. Now, when that shaft rotates, it turns a pulley, and I've got another pulley mounted in place of the handle on a rotary table to which I've mounted that little lathe chuck. This gives me the coupling that I need between the longitudinal axis of the mill and the rotary table so that I can very easily machine helical grooves in cylindrical workpieces. Now, this device has any number of applications, one of which is making rifling buttons, so that's what I'll be doing today. However, before I machine the button, I need to make a new set of pulleys so that I can get the twist ratio that I want. I'm just going to machine the pulleys out of some 3 8 inch aluminum plate. Now, as I've said before, the fit-up between a rifling button and the barrel has to be very precise in order to work correctly. And so it usually takes me a couple of tries to get that fit just right. Uh, that's why I'm making several rifling buttons at once here, uh, all in slightly different diameters, so as to expedite that process.
Well, I think this is the button that's going to work for us. And here I have a piece of DOM tubing, just like the one I already made a smoothbore barrel out of. So I'm going to go ahead and rifle this one. Now, I prefer to drive a rifling button through a barrel with a hydraulic press, uh, but the press that I currently have isn't quite long enough for this barrel. So until I get around to modifying that to accommodate longer barrels, I'm just going to drive this with a hammer. And there is a nicely rifled barrel. I ran the button through three times for a total of nine grooves. Uh, I ended up getting the spacing a little bit non-uniform, so two sets of grooves came out real close together. Uh, but it actually looks kind of artistic, and I expect it'll work just fine. So the next step will be to plug one end of this and cut some threads on it so I can use it in the Utah pistol. Uh, but I think we'll save that for a future episode. So until next time, thanks for watching the Idaho Show.